Hi everybody, welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where I, Antoinette, want to give you insights and information about the board games you might want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for a dice dungeon extravaganza? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ugh. Ugh. Too many bones. How many bones is too many? Well, in this fantasy themed dice builder role playing game, you play as a gearlock. One who has upgradable and customizable abilities that all come in the form of dice. These dice you'll use on adventures from your homelands to defeat enemy forces and eventually the tyrant. Hold on to your chips and claim victory. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, Too Many Bones is a fantasy themed game in which you play as a gearlock, a kind of hitherto unheard of race. Um, who are leaving their homeland for the first time to go and defeat a growing evil one tyrant at a time. And that is exactly how your games go. You choose which tyrant you're going to battle against and you go and you level up your character, you acquire new skills and items so that you're going to be able to defeat them. Um, as you travel along, there are parts of a story being told as well. Um, so somebody will read out, you know, what the card says in between your kind of combat adventures. And from there, they'll reveal things about the world you're in. And you'll have to make decisions about what it is you'd like to do or how you might proceed. Now, the fantasy setting, is it new and exciting? Not particularly. We've heard of this before. And the way we learn about the world, you know, through reading the card also isn't new either. Um, if anything, I feel like the story in this is lacking quite a bit. Um, that deck of cards really feels more like a random event deck. They don't tell a story together. Rather, it feels like a means to an end because, you know, it helps you along in advancing your character, giving you items and things like that. And sure, there are choices on there, but when you flip the card to decide which it is, um, it, you can read what the answers are straight away. So I think that took away from some of the story and from some of the excitement, you know, and the guessing. Um, so now that we've gotten through that, um, the other issue I suppose I have with the story is the fact that it's very jarring when you compare it to how combat works. So combat is kind of abstracted. You, you place your characters out on a mat, a series of chips, um, and there's a lot of dice rolling and kind of calculating and maneuvering and posturing and things like that. Um, so I find it very hard to go from this, oh, we're having an adventure, we're telling a story, we've encountered such and such, um, to suddenly be like, oh, it's all numbers and kind of working things out. Um, so I'm not sure how well these two actually fit together. Um, overall, though, I think the setting is interesting. It's just not particularly immersive. Um, just because of this kind of dichotomy between we're, we're telling a story, but we're also doing lots of combat stuff. So it was hard to get the two to fit together. Um, now, similar games to this, um, I suppose I want to talk about something like Gloomhaven or maybe Legends of Andor. Um, but what Too Many Bones does that none of these others do is it really focuses on dice and developing your character. Um, and I think it's a really, really interesting way to go with it. Thing two, what kinds of actions are you going to be taking on your turn? So this is a, both a solo and cooperative game in which you're going to be fighting a series of monsters to get to the big bad. And in between, you'll be reading out event cards to make decisions about your characters. Um, but the first thing you're going to notice is your character, Matt, and it's a neoprene mat, and it will come with a series of holes in it which in which you will put your unique dice, because every character gets a special set of dice and a special set of abil abilities that belongs only to them. And as you progress through the game and you um, level up your dice and things, you're able to put more of them out in your mat and then use them for combat. Um, now, the game starts with four characters. Um, these are a healer type, a berserker type, a tank or, you know, the person who takes damage type and a grenadier type. Um, I don't know if they're the most original um, ideas to go with. Um, however, I do find that the abilities they unlock are pretty darn interesting. 
And each character is unique in, as well in the sense that, that they have their own kind of talent tree. So every time you play them, you could explore different avenues or different aspects of that type of character and build them differently, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, my problem with this, however, was I found it fun to unlock their dice and see what they did maybe the first couple of times we played. But after that, I kind of just got to know my favourites and I always just unlocked all of the ones I want. So it kind of lost a bit of a sheen over time. Now, you use all of these dice in combat and combat is done on a grid, um, which feels weird, right? You go from a story to a grid, um, upon which you'll fight off all of these monsters that are on these beautiful, beautiful poker chips and you'll use poker chips as your health bars as well. Um, and you're gonna use your dice to take down the bad guys. Um, I like the bad guys a lot. I think they're very well designed. Um, they all have their own unique abilities and ways in which they will attack and behave. Um, and so the puzzle really comes about, you know, where you're trying to figure out, do I kill this one first or next? Where should I be standing when this happens? And it comes very tactical like that. Um, so you're going to roll your dice and use your super cool special abilities to take down the enemies. Um, the only problem is, is that those special dice you have are normally only usable once per combat. So you might have something really cool to do, but you only get to do it once. Um, I don't know, it felt a little bit wah wah to me. Um, but your abilities are rather powerful, so maybe that's to balance it all out. Um, so combat though, as a whole, is it's not bad actually. Um, I guess my, my, my problem is actually is that nothing bad really happens to you if you die. Um, so you can die um, and what will happen is that you'll just reset and you'll do the fight again, except this time the boss is slightly harder because another day has passed. Um, and this is true for bosses as well at the end of the game. And it's it's just a bit like, huh? So nothing really terrible happens. It just gets slightly harder. I think it makes it harder for people. If you had a tough time with the boss in the first place, it's gonna be even harder the second time around. Um, but overall, yeah, combat is interesting. I really liked rolling all those dice. I'm not gonna lie. I liked having the special abilities and comboing things together to get them off. Thing three on the table. So, Unsurprisingly, um, Too Many Bones is really, really tidy when you set it up, and that's because of its beautiful neoprene mats, and of course the fact that everything is a stack of poker chips. And it's the same reason that people are gonna come over to you and ask you about this game, um, just because of that kind of look and that tidy feel. Um, it's easy to set up and to put away, and that's because there are game trays in the box. So you've got your own little box for to keep your own colored dice in, so they're ready for next time round. I loved it, um, fantastic idea. Um, now, it takes us two to four hours to play this, and that's very varied because you can choose to play the game at different difficulties and different lengths, um, but a game can continue if you're, you know, you're not succeeding as you'd hoped and whatnot, so it is kind of variable. Now, the rule book. Oh, the rule book needs its own section just because it is that terrible. Um, we've read through the rule book a number of times, we've watched a number of videos, and I'm still not 100% sure that I'm playing this game correctly. And it really ruined the game experience for me. I think there's nothing worse than that feeling of uncertainty while playing if this is how it's supposed to be occurring. Um, yeah, overall, I have to say, really, really unimpressed here. Um, shockingly bad. Like, you have player aids to go with your characters, but they don't give you the information you might need to play the character up front. It's like hidden in some other text. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so appalled by this that I think it might have ruined this game for me. Um, now, if we're going to talk about re replayability, um, I'm going to say I don't think the events deck was very varied, um, not helped by the fact that every time you played the first three events are always identical, um, but it did just seem to fall into a pattern of oh yeah this, oh yeah that, um, nothing really stood out there. Um, you'd think that upgrading your dice on the tech tree, you know, doing it differently each time would also give some, you know, added variability here. Um, but what I found was that it was easy enough to unlock dice and I would always just unlock the stuff I wanted. Um, so I'd never felt like I was really exploring different aspects of my character. Um, and maybe that's just me as a player, but I just didn't find it as fresh as I thought I might. Um, for me though, where there is tons of kind of um, interest and activity is in the monsters themselves. Um, I found them to be very varied and quite delightful. And I loved the way they used their abilities that, you know, you would have to consider this every time you played. Um, and they were always a delight in what they were trying to doing and uh, trying to doing, try to do. And I would love to have seen a little bit more of that elsewhere in the game. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, everything here says looks, but not in a particularly ostentatious way. It's all very quiet, very tidy, and dare I say, some sort of mature screaming of opulence. Yeah, it's a, it's a grown up over the top. 
Um, and the box tells you, I suppose, a lot about the game. And I'm going to start by the box size because it's huge and it's too big to fit in a Kallax for a start. Um, and not only that, but the cover art, it's very grey and very grim and serious looking. It doesn't necessarily give a lot away about the game itself. Um, so how do you guys feel about the artwork? Um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the gear locks. I don't know. They just don't look fun to play with. They just look a bit miserable um but you know art is as art is and whatnot um but despite that there are some other lovely pieces of art in the game um you see these on your equipment cards and then of course on the monster tokens i really really like the art on the monster tokens they're very ethereal and creepy i, I liked it a lot um, now, component-wise, yeah, this is like over-the-top brilliant. Um, you've got like game trays, you've got custom dice, you've got um, neoprene mats and poker chips. You know, it's everything you could probably want in a game. Um, overall, I think this game is a wonderful package, um, even if the art did fall a little bit flat for me. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, Too Many Bones could be a great game. It could be an outstanding game. Um, and I have no real way of knowing that. Um, the rulebook here has caused me a number of issues and raised so much uncertainty with me as a reviewer that it, it's definitely tarnished how I'm looking at this game. Because every time I played, I wondered, is this fit playing correctly? And then I worried about, you know, will I come back and tell you guys about the game? Am I judging it fairly? Is this accurate? Because um, it seems unfair if it's not. So you're just gonna have to trust that this is how I played it. This is how my experience with it was. I'm not sure if it's entirely true or not, um, but this is what you got people. So let's start with the fun stuff, which is um, I love, love, love the idea behind this game. Um, I absolutely adore the idea of the tech trees, um, you know, kind of like in Diablo 2 where you had forking paths and you could go different ways to build a different type of character. Um, I love the upgrading of the dice and getting new ones and filling those in. And of course, I love just rolling the dice against my opponent in big, big piles um, and watching all my things combo together. I do wish that that tech tree was more distinctive. Um, I had no problems um, filling out whatever I wanted on my ma most games. Um, and so that kind of took some of the fun out of the tech tree aspect. I think maybe that could have been done a little bit better. Um, now, combat is, well, it's kind of the crux of what's going on here, isn't it? And I like some of it, but not all of it. Um, I dislike the mat or the grid that you play on. You're going from like, we're telling a story, we're having an adventure, to suddenly it's like, you must be in row one, slot two. And you know what, it, like it moves from like story to abstract. It's just jarring. Um, but I do like the monsters a lot. I think they were very cool and inventive. Um, I would... Also suppose um, I like you, how you use your abilities together in conjunction with each other to take people down. I wish you could have you know, reused your dice a little more, but I guess there's probably a reason for that. Um, but the weird thing about combat is that there doesn't seem to be any consequences to you losing, meaning combat is just kind of this thing you're going through as opposed to something you care about. And I think you should care about it because if you fail, you simply, you know, repeat the monster again and it's slightly more difficult because a day has passed. This is also true for like the tyrant and the boss kind of at the, the end of the level. Um, and I just found it weird that you're punished in real world time as opposed to something to do with the in-game. Um, I feel like you either should have been given a boost or a negative or something to make combat worthwhile. Um, yeah, definitely worthwhile. Um, so, okay. There were so many things I was excited about about this game. It's got all kinds of fun stuff I really like. And in this beautiful, beautiful package, um, but man, that rule book is just a cruelty. Um, the, f the effort you have to go to to get to the game itself is hideously unfair um, because I think some of this game is very, very brilliant and there's some fantastic gameplay in there. The problem is the effort to unwrap it, to get it there um, is difficult and I'm not sure that's a path everyone's gonna want to travel. Do I think you should have too many bones in your collection? Well, I think if you don't mind putting in a little bit of hard work to access the giddy glamour of upgrading and rolling dice at your foes, then this is a game you might want to look at. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Too Many Bones, why not shout them off in the comment box below? 
And until next time, tune in again for some more short, well, I don't know about short, informative, yes, board game reviews.